Moving in South Georgia, expectant moms are spending 30 minutes to an hour driving to their OBGYN's office. Now that's because of labor and delivery closures in hospitals and medical malpractice suits against providers, straining an already scarce workforce. WALB News 10's investigator Jamie Worsley takes a closer look at the current problems and potential solutions of OB deserts in our region. My labor and delivery is about to close down and it's like last minute and I need to know where I'm going to have my baby. Angel Glass is just one of many moms left without OB care after her local hospital announced they were closing their labor and delivery unit. The Donaldsonville um, uh, labor and delivery is closing, so that's going to have another influx of patients that had a critical care access center that they no longer have. An administrator for Donaldsonville Hospital said the decision to close their unit was strictly financial. These type of closures are nothing new in South Georgia. As you can see on this map indicated by the red X's, most of the counties surrounding larger medical centers have closed their OB delivery services too, putting a strain on the major facilities that are still open. Those are indicated by a black dot. As a mom, you know, you want the best. So I'm thinking, oh, well, I want to go to Dothan or Albany. You know, you hear wonderful things about them. I want there. And to constantly turn away, the more the panic sets in. Angel plans to transfer to Bainbridge for her prenatal care and delivery. In fact, most of the patients from Donaldsonville will do the same. Memorial Hospital in Manor says they're planning to hire Donaldsonville's OB and several of their staff members to prepare for this influx of patients. The fact is that in rural health care, it's a challenge to keep OB services going. We're fortunate to have three OBGYNs and a, and a nurse practitioner in our office. The goal would potentially, with another influx of these patients, we would probably look to hire Dr. Lenz, so that would be four physicians. As more OB facilities shut their doors, the distance between places offering this care grows larger. And that can be a barrier for women needing prenatal care, especially those with income, transportation, or insurance limitations. Access to care is, is a crisis across the country. Um, certainly Georgia has its fair share of, of uh, lack of OBGYNs, so these patients don't have access to care. And as you can imagine, not having prenatal care um, can lead to um, many different issues. Certainly makes any obstetric emergency um, more likely. When these OB emergencies occur, the OB provider can face the legal action from their patients. OB is one of the highest litigious uh, fields in the specialty of medicine. We typically always rank in the top four for uh, medical malpractice costs. And it is well known that OBs get sued uh, on average more often than a lot of the other medical specialties. But there are things that medical centers can do when it comes to helping OBs avoid lawsuits and recruiting more OBs. One is participating in OB emergency training like PCOM offers. It allows us to use both high fidelity simulators and also task trainers to first be able to recognize that this is potentially a problem in an OB emergency, and then also to practice some of the maneuvers that would be needed to uh, lead to resolution. I submitted open records requests to all of the major medical centers in our region. None currently offer any type of litigation protections for OBs that have rights to deliver at their facilities. However, some like Phoebe and South Georgia Medical Center have OBs on staff to specifically help with OB emergencies, freeing up outside OBs from that legal risk. This also helps with that work-life balance. My first practice in obstetrics was in Southwest Georgia uh, where uh, the state helped reduce the burden of my student loans. I think that's a way that they can uh, lure uh, and offer incentives to OBs to come out uh, and get uh, their loans paid off. When it comes to recruiting more OBs to this area, the solutions we've already explored might not be enough. That's where other incentives and programs come in. The importance of having actual programs targeted to rural medicine. So we see that a lot with family medicine and other specialties. I don't really see that a lot specifically for obstetrics and gynecology. There is still hope that these changes will bring out the next generation of providers and start growth in what's considered an OBGYN desert in South Georgia. 
Well, Memorial Hospital and, Hospital and Maynard hopes to help women in these rural areas get prenatal care with office visits in both Blakely and Donaldsonville. Now that transition will begin in July of this year, and they're still currently looking at their resources to offer those prenatal programs. For WALB Investigates, I'm Jamie Worsley.